A very pleasant afternoon to each and every one of you, our valued new and first year students that are joining in in this faculty orientation exercise this afternoon. I am Jarrell Alda, Program Coordinator at the Division of Student Services and Development. And it is my absolute pleasure to be among the first to congratulate you and welcome you to your first year experience at the UE St. Augustine campus. So as new students, your orientation and transition is important to us as we recognize the direct connection it has to you achieving the highest levels of success in your first year of study. And so with this in mind, the first year experience program was developed specifically to meet your informational demands, acclimatize you to your new university environment and help you in getting comfortable as you prepare for your exciting university journey with us. So today you will be in oriented, sorry, into the dynamic faculty, the faculty of social sciences. And I'm hoping that you are already excited and you will understand why a little later on. So you are asked to pay close attention to the information that will be shared with you this afternoon as you get ready to explore the life-changing university experience that awaits. For the purpose of this afternoon's exercise, you are asked to disable your video and of course have your mics muted as we have a panel of wonderful, vibrant presenters that will advise you on why the Faculty of Social Sciences is the best choice. So guiding you through, to, through today's orientation exercise is the Dean of the Faculty of Social Sciences. Uh, she is Dr. Akola Cameron, uh, who I now have the pleasure of inviting to address you. Over to you, Dr. Cameron. Thank you, Jarrell. Good afternoon, everyone. It is it's, it's certainly my pleasure to, to welcome you, our new undergraduate students, first of all, to the University of the West Indies. As, as many of you may know, most recently, the UWI was ranked the number one university in the Caribbean, one that the Times Higher Education World Rankings has placed among the top 5% of 25,000 recognized universities globally. And we are also the only Caribbean university to be ranked among the best. And so I can confirm that you have made a most excellent choice and we are most fortunate to have you with us. I know that it, it's unprecedented times and uh, we are operating in a new normal. It's new for us. This is the first time we are actually having an online orientation. But it, although it's new, it's exciting and it has really given us an opportunity to, to do things differently. And so more specifically, my colleagues and I in the Faculty of Social Sciences, we want to warmly welcome you to the faculty. We are very delighted that you have chosen us to partner with you as you continue your academic journey. Now in the, in the Faculty of Social Sciences, I have to say we are a very diverse community and we're a community where we aim to be socially engaged and solutions oriented. And that's the vision for our faculty. And in everything that we do, you will experience when you start interacting with your lecturers, when you start engaging in different activities, that we have packaged our program and packaged the experience in such a way that we expect that you will be at the end of the day socially engaged and solutions oriented in your thinking, in your outlook, and in all the decisions that you make throughout your three years here with us as well as when you leave the, the campus. So while we encourage all of our students to focus on academic excellence, we also want you to be well-rounded individuals. Individuals who are able to build and sustain healthy relationships with your peers, with your potential employers, with employees, as well as the wider community. We also desire, my colleagues and I, that as students of this great faculty, that you become deep thinkers, that you become creators of solutions that can affect and change increasing societal challenges. And so because of that, we see it as 
our prime responsibility to prepare you for worlds unknown, to prepare your minds for, for thoughts unthinkable, and to prepare your resolve for struggles unimaginable. And so we expect that in this new journey, you will do what is necessary to reap the maximum benefits from this experience. And so permit me to, to just stress on just the, the, the importance of some of the, the basic actions that are required. And I, I just want to, to highlight three of those actions. One, I want to encourage you to, to be curious, challenge what you hear, challenge what you read, ask questions there are no foolish questions right? we really want you to to develop that inquiring mind and to move away from that taken for grantedness as i would would, would want to call it and and really push the boundaries and and really be curious about your learning experience two i want to stress on the importance of being engaged in the experience attend your classes, engage your lecturers for clarity of understanding, do your research. In addition to, to being engaged in terms of your, your academic experience, I also encourage you to, to engage in various non-academic activities. Get involved in clubs, groups, sporting activities, professional development and community activities and the like. As, as, as the faculty continues to, to build relationships with external stakeholders, there will be many exciting opportunities through exchange programs, internships, community initiatives, seminars, all for you to, to interact with your various industries and be exposed to the practical aspects of your study areas. Take advantage of every opportunity that this experience can afford you. And then thirdly, I want to encourage you to stay healthy. Take care of your physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual health. It's our mantra here in the faculty. If you have a problem, if you have a challenge, you're having any issues, do not suffer in silence. We are here to, to assist you in whatever way possible. So please reach out. We also want to hear from you directly. And so I encourage you to offer your services, offer your suggestions to the student guild as it pertains to the improvement of the, of the, uni, of the UE experience. Our faculty, we work very closely with our social sciences representative, Kira Alexander. You'll hear from Kira in a bit. And uh, we work with her and, and the rest of the, the, the guild team with a view of implementing positive change for the benefit of all. Okay. So as we go through this very short program that we, we have here for you today, the, I just wanted to let you know that the Faculty of Social Sciences, we have committed and capable academic and administrative staff within the four departments who are all eagerly waiting to work with you to provide the support that is necessary for you to successfully navigate your way through the various programs. And so this afternoon, you will hear from the four department heads who will introduce themselves and they will share with you what to expect from your experience, the experience of your program and the experience of, of being a part of the respective departments. In addition to hearing from the department heads, you will hear from various students who would have passed through the faculty and those who are still with us sharing their experience. And then we also have with us our director of the Division of Student Services and Development, who will give you some information on some of the opportunities that I mentioned that you should take advantage of. And then we, we also have some remarks from our, our very own Lisa McDonald, who, who is responsible for a co-curricular program within the faculty. And then, of course, we will close by hearing from Kira Alexander, who is your social sciences representative on the, the Guild of Students. So 
without further ado, I am now going to start off with Dr. Charlene Roach, who is the newly minted head of the Department of Political Science. And Charlene will bring some brief remarks on behalf of the Department of Political Science. So I hand over to Charlene. Charlene? Okay, is everyone hearing me now? Good afternoon, is everyone hearing me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, great. Good afternoon, everyone again. I am Charlene Roach, thank you, Dean. I am Charlene Roach, the new head of Department of Political Science. You'll hear me saying DPS, not Department of Public Safety, but Department of Political Science, just to kind of not have to repeat it all the time. I want to extend a very warm welcome to all our new and incoming students to our department on behalf of my colleagues and I. We like to say at the Faculty of Social Sciences, and this is extended to us at DPS, that we shape minds and we shape lives. We are very excited because we want you to know that as a DPS student, you are about to embark upon a life-changing journey and you will not be the same. I want you to think about that. You're starting a journey and you are not going to be the same at the end of this journey in the next perhaps three years. I want you to remember these words as well as you begin your journey this semester. Life is a journey and it's not a destination. It's another phase of an experience and it will be what you make it to be. We want you to be very open to new experiences this semester and see this semester and, and your first year as an adventure in learning, growing, self-discovery, challenging yourself and others in your team, of course, virtually, and classroom activities. I would like to give you a bit of a sneak preview of some of the exciting experiences and adventures that you will have in your first year at DPS. But one of the things, again, I want to say that will be critical to your enjoyment in your first year is being open to change and new experiences and new beginnings. So for instance, I'll tell you, when I started my first year, I was actually in the Faculty of Humanities. I was doing history with social sciences. And the dean at that time challenged me to drop two of my courses. I wasn't too happy to drop two of my history courses because I felt I knew what I wanted to do. And my career was set. I wanted to be a history professor or an attorney. But she encouraged me to change two of those courses and to take up Introduction to Sociology and Introduction to Politics. So I did it out of respect. I mean, she's the dean. How could I say no? And I am so thankful. At the my end, name is Jane Mark that I literally opened a new world of learning for myself. And it really changed the whole course of my educational plans. So this academic year is going to be very unique for you all, as the Dean mentioned in her welcome. And you will experience different teaching and learning modalities in a virtual remote platform. And as a DPS student, you will experience uh, leading presentations and analyzing questions in that virtual setting in small breakout groups, you're going to have little quizzes, teamwork and team assignments, you're going to be leading your peers, you're going to be harmonizing your ideas, even having little debates, developing effective communication skills. In your first year again, you will experience what it means to be an active learner. And that means being empowered to speak up in classes and to influence others by articulating your ideas, participating in classroom activities and conducting research projects and having fun while you're doing it. As a DPS student, you will learn how to develop good research skills and how to analyze and critique, how to think about new ways of doing things on many levels, how to develop an academic writing style and how to use technology to enhance learning and your classroom experiences. Let me tell you a bit about our faculty at the Department of Political Science. Our faculty members all have interesting life stories. We are very real people behind the roles that we play. 
we have diverse backgrounds, we share different starting points, and we possess a range of varying skill sets and competencies, knowledge, abilities. We have, for example, in the areas of political science, parliamentary and constitutional studies, Dr. Hamid Ghani and Dr. Mukesh Basdeo, and they may be unknown to you, but they are frequent contributors in the media. Similarly, we have others, colleagues such as Dr. Vishnu Raghunath, he's a former head of department. We have Dr. Indira Rampasad, and they are also featured very regularly in the media. My area is public management, so I engage with stakeholders in public agencies outside of lecturing and provide expert advice on policy matters on public human resource management, as well as helping in terms of training and development of our workforce in the public service. Professor Anne Bassessa is also in that area of public management, and she's an expert in her field and has contributed significantly in research about public service locally and regionally. And then we have Dr. Theodore Todoru. He's originally from Montreal, and he's renowned in the international, as an international scholar in the field of international relations. So we have a lot of diversity among our academic staff at DPS. But what we all share in common is that we are building a legacy and impacting our societies locally, regionally, and internationally. And most of all, I want to let you know that we care about our students. So we care very much about you. We are committed to working with you and developing you and mentoring you and ensuring your success as DPS students as well as individuals. So your UE DPS experience at the Faculty of Social Sciences will prepare you to be tomorrow's game changers. And the Dean shared some of those skill sets that she wanted to challenge you to think about developing. But all the things that are going to be happening during that journey is going to help you to become a critical and creative thinker, a problem solver, an effective communicator. You're going to become knowledgeable and informed, competent. You're going to become leaders effective team players, you can be IT skilled and information literate. So you see having this virtual setting, you are actually a bear, a, a, a head in the game. You're gonna be socially and culturally responsive, be building ethical, ethical citizens, ethical stu students. You're gonna be innovative and you're gonna have a lifelong practice of learning. We also expect you at the end of this journey to develop 21st century future professional skills, such as being confident, a concerned citizen, a self-directed learner, and active professionals who are game changers. So as I close, I want you to remember that comment that I started with. As you begin this journey, I want you to reflect that life is a journey and it's not a destination. It's another phase of an experience and it will be what you will make it to be. Thank you. My name is Jade Marcus Sanyal and I'm currently pursuing a degree in International Relations and Political Sciences via the Department of Political Sciences. The UWI has always held a special place in the heart of Caribbean development and as a result from a very young age I've been compelled to be part of this historic institution. In two years of studying here at the UWI, I've learned the value of camaraderie to be part of an academically active peer group for us to work together to ensure that we all come out on top. I've also learned the value of challenge, to challenge myself to do courses that I never thought I would enjoy or thrive in, and to challenge myself also to seek out-of-the-box ideas in improving learning and campus life. I've also learned the value of courage. It was the bedrock and is still the bedrock of my university experience. The courage to speak up on behalf of my other peers that might not be so outright with their views. The, the, the courage to be able to challenge ideas and theories, not just with my peers, but with my higher ups. Camaraderie, challenge and courage. The foundations for change. Indeed, the University of the West Indies is where tomorrow's game changers begin their journey. That's it. Thank you very much, Charlene, for those very encouraging words. 
And of course, you would have heard from one of our current students, Jade Mark Sonilal, who is in the Department of Political Science. We want to turn our attention now to the Department of Behavioral Sciences. And I'll ask the head of that department, Dr. Talia Esnad, to bring greetings on behalf of the, the DBS. Thank you, Dean, and good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the staff here, um, academic, administrative, and also current students in our diverse programs, I would like to warmly welcome you to the Department of Behavioral Sciences. I think it's fair to say that we pride ourselves in being a multidisciplinary department with um, various programs in sociology, psychology, social work, mediation, um, and also in criminology and criminal justice. We have also a range of, of, of uh, minors that we um, give our, our students access to and will also complement the degrees that you are doing within our department. I would really say that we are also a family and we are here to support you and to ground you in the various types of knowledge that we offer, um, give you a consciousness around identity, around how we are situated globally, regionally, locally as well, but also really just in the practices, the skills that you need to go forward and to make you agents of change. And as Dean alluded to earlier, it's about being socially engaged, but it's also primarily about learning how to be an agent of change in the process. And DBS is ready, standing, willing and ready to work with you on your journey, both academically and professionally. And perhaps I would add, personally as well. And we are here to support you and provide that platform, provide the foundation and the warmth that would bring you to the journeys that you've all embarked on at this particular point in time. On a more personal note, I could relate to where you are positioned right now as students starting into this particular program that you are all registered and applied to and been accepted to congratulations on being accepted into your various programs. I sat in your chair, not particularly this one or the ones that you're occupying right now, but in the position of being a new student, stepping into a program, not knowing where the journey is going to take me, not knowing the struggles, the process, the end or the outcome. But certainly I could tell you that being part of this particular department that I now chair, it has given me the opportunity to know about the past, to know about the present and where we are positioned right now as a department, but also envision a future for you, for our staff and for all those that are to come. I would also like to share that I sat in a graduation ceremony a couple of years ago and I heard Chancellor Beckles making the statement that we are a university of excellence grounded in the region. And as I sat there, I appreciated that in a different way because I moved from the unknown to the known. And I had a sense of pride in that very moment of being a graduate of this very institution. And I just want to encourage you all and let you know that you are about to share this unique privilege and prestige of being part of this great institution. And I want to warmly welcome you again and let you know that we are here to serve, here to work with you to embark on the journey of change. Thank you everyone, warmly again welcoming you and looking forward to meeting you all as we go into the future. Dean? Hello, my name is Chelsea Sinanan and I'm currently pursuing the MSc in Sociology at the St. Augustine campus of the University of the West Indies. I've thoroughly enjoyed my program since day one, mainly due to the incredible diversity and in disciplines that I've been exposed to, things that I had not previously encountered in my bachelor's, I've been thrust into for my master's. So to see all these different disciplines interact has been so exciting to say the least. The advice from my lecturers has been an absolute game changer in this entire process. They have equipped me with insight that has been pivotal in shaping my worldview and I've had the most amazing resources like the West Indiana section at my disposal. I truly think with the culmination of these factors, the university prepares its students with an apt foundation to become an agent of change in tomorrow's world. Thank you very much, Talia. 
again, you, you, you're hearing that the Faculty of Social Sciences, we're a community, we're a family. And again, Natalia is echoing the sentiments of Charlene, where we, are, we stand ready, willing to, to serve you, to really assist you as you embark on this journey. And so another member of our family is uh, Dr. Shelly Ann Wilson, who is the head of the Department of Management Studies. And I'll ask Shelly Ann if she can bring some remarks on behalf of the department at this time. Thank you, Dean. Good afternoon, everyone. It is my pleasure to extend a warm welcome to all of you on behalf of the Department of Management Studies. We are extremely happy and very proud that you chose the UWI or UE, and we are extremely happy that you chose the Faculty of Social Sciences for your undergraduate degree. You have made a huge decision to enroll into university and you have been accepted, and so congratulations. I have a short time today to share some words with you, so I'm going to do that in three points. My first point is, Enrolling into university means that you have decided to pursue higher education. You have made it through your secondary school, you have made it through your primary school, and now you have decided to move forward. You're going on to tertiary level. And this is where you're going to gain knowledge and understanding in your chosen field of study. So in the Department of Management Studies, we have programs across many disciplines accounting, banking and finance, insurance and risk, leadership, HR, marketing, sports, tourism, and of course, management studies. And in these programs, you're going to develop skills, analytical skills, problem solving skills, critical thinking, data-driven decision-making skills, presentation skills. So be prepared for the work involved in learning and in growing. And one thing to remember is work involves effort and effort, directed effort will lead to rewards. So put in the work and once you put in that work, you will get the rewards. My second point, and this has been raised by um, the speakers before me, is that UE and your university experience is not just about work. Take advantage of the opportunities to build friendships. Some of your classmates will be your friends for life. Build your network. Some of your colleagues will turn up later on at some point in your career. I still meet people now and I say, but you, your face looks familiar. I say, you were on campus the same time with me? That, that happens. So build your network. And join groups. There are so many groups on campus. Join and participate. What's the science with orientations going on now? In the Department of Management. We have a tourism society. We offer co-curricular classes in uh, courses in financial literacy, we have ethics and integrity. So be sure to get a well-rounded experience while you are here on campus. If I had a chance to do it all over again, the one thing I would take advantage of would be the range of clubs and activities that you now have the opportunity to take advantage of. And my third point is with respect to your lecturers and our admin staff, we are here for you. We will expect the best from you and how we will get the best from you. We will encourage you. We will push you. We will stretch you. We will challenge you. But ultimately, we are doing this because we want the best from you. We want you to be your best. All right, so special welcome to the management students study, the management study students. We look forward to seeing you. You will meet us, your lecturers and the admin staff during advising next week. And for the students in the other departments, we welcome you as well. We offer a wide range of courses, a number of minors. 
So as you go through your, your degree program, look out for our, you can explore our course offerings and our minors. So in summarizing, my first point, work hard, extend yourself, put in the effort. My second point, Marshall said work hard, play harder. I wouldn't say play harder, I'm just gonna say play hard. Enjoy your time here at the university. And my third point, the lecturers and the staff, we are here with you on your journey and we are here for you on your journey. So welcome again, we look forward to seeing you. Back to you, Dean. Thank you, Shelley. Hi, my name is Ryan Nash and I'm a final year student at the University of the West Indies, St. Augustine campus. I'm currently pursuing my undergraduate degree in leadership and management and boy, what a journey it's been. UB has equipped me, not just with all these gray hairs, but also with the tools that I need to be a game changer of tomorrow. One of the things that I'm most grateful for in my experience at UWE was the ability to have good relations with my lecturers. Lecturers like Dr. Balwant, Dr. Barrett, and so many others. I was able to learn from their knowledge, from their experience, from their wisdom, and apply those things to my life. So today I just want to encourage you, take advantage of the opportunities that you have today. And we look forward to seeing you at the campus. Take care. Hey, thank you very much, Shelley. And I just want to, to pick up on a point you, you raised there. And I think it's important for you to, to know, students, that in the Faculty of Social Sciences, Sciences, as you've been hearing so far, we do have a range of programs. And the exciting part about it is that you can actually pursue courses from anywhere in the Faculty of Social Sciences. So you can be a management studies student and you can do courses in economics, international relations, psychology, whatever is of interest to you. And so we really, I wanted to underscore Shelley's point there, we encourage you to take advantage of that, that you can really expose yourself to diverse areas so that at the end of your, your three years with us, you will certainly be more rounded and more exposed in a number of areas. And so finally, our, our fourth head of department, Darren Conrad, will share with us. He is the head of the Department of Economics. And Darren, we hand over to you. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. Uh, on behalf of the Department of Economics, the department, the students, the staff, the academic staff and the non-academic staff, we extend a very warm welcome to everyone. We're really excited to have you in the Faculty of Social Sciences. And for in those who have chosen economics, we're excited that you've chosen economics. The faculty is very diverse in its, in its offerings. The departments are diverse in, this, in, the, in its offerings. But at the Department of Economics, we're quite laser focused. Our major is economics and then we have economics special. Now, while we are laser focused in our offerings, uh, our business is about studying human beings, mankind, in the ordinary business of life. That is one of the definitions of economics. And so by studying human beings in the ordinary business of life, it means that the core of the issues that we examine really touches on everyone, irrespective of discipline. So we bear that in mind, and so we take it very seriously in the Department of Economics. Um, Economics, more importantly, given the times that we live in, is unique in that it teaches us that where vulnerability is the norm, resilience becomes an imperative. So right now we work towards resilience. We, we look at making decisions that would safeguard our interests and positively influence the quality of our lives and limit, and, and limit our external constraints. Our doors here in the Department of Economics are virtual doors in recent times. They're always open to you, irrespective of your discipline. Feel free to stop by to talk about interest rates, uh, exchange rates, trade, development, the impact of the current pandemic on the, econo on the economy. Talk about anything that you feel that you have a burning desire to learn a bit more about. We know that pretty soon that we will have a budget being presented. Look out for our webinars and seminars that speaks to all of these different issues. 
we talk about all of the current issues, and we talk about uh, public finance, we talk about sustainable development, and we're not just talking about topics aimed at building human capital, but we really are working towards building uh, human capital to address the needs of the region and to prepare individuals for an exciting world of business where you get to be as creative as you want to be. We invite you to visit our Facebook page, visit our website. Our lecturers are always available to, to have discussions with you. Um, we look forward to all that you will be doing while you're here at the FSS. We encourage you to be engaged. Engage us in, in the discussions. Engage us in your discourse. In, invite us to some of the different programs that you'll be having when you join your clubs. Uh, we'd be happy and willing to speak at such events. Um, for those of you who have chosen economics, thank you. For those of you who have not chosen economics, it's not too late. You can still come on over to us. Um, we, we look forward again to having you um, and we, we really, um, while we do um, operate in this environment, one of the things I'm looking forward to is when we can get back to some level of normalcy in terms of being able to visit the campus. The campus misses you. You haven't started yet, but I certainly miss you already in your presence being on campus. So again, our virtual doors are always open. I, for one, try to keep my video on. May not always look as presentable as today, but best, the best I can. But again, a warm welcome to all of you and we look forward to having you. Um, I think we have a testimonial from one of our students before we go back over to the uh, dean. Thank you, and again, welcome. Hi, I am Dana Sukdew and I pursued an undergraduate degree in economics at the University of the West Indies, St. Augustine. My undergraduate experience has been nothing short of transformational and engaging on both a personal and academic level. The program allowed me to interact with lecturers who not only helped me to expand my knowledge in so many theoretical areas of economics, but also allowed me to gain a hands-on approach in dealing with real-life economic situations. From courses such as international trade to the economics of climate change and disaster risk management, the program offers a wide range of courses that allows upcoming economists to be able to dive into numerous aspects of the field. Being a student within the economics department has also allowed me to enhance my confidence and leadership skills and presented me with numerous opportunities, which I used to successfully jumpstart my career as a budding economist and in order for me to go out into the real world and become a game changer. Hey, thank you very much, Darren. And I see you took the opportunity to solicit some students there. <laughs> Okay, so that's all the, the remarks from the, the four departments. So as it says on this screen in front of you, it's four departments, one exciting faculty. And we want to just wrap up this, this segment by uh, playing a, a video, a spoken word piece by one of our very own students who will tell us a little bit about her experience through the, the, the medium of spoken word. So this is Amoy Blackett, and she's one of our postgraduate students. To be like me is not easy, but to be what you want, you stand a chance. I am not good, nor am I bad, but what I am is working hard. From undergraduate to postgrad, studying for that success. I've toiled with my books through classes, but it was not just for those passes, but for the experiences in the classroom, and it was worth it with the masses. Do I stop now because it's hard? Or push right through and make it to grad? Three colors gain physically but thousands gained mentally. My story is very true, and this I am here to tell you. The more you do, the more things come at you. From buying books and paying dues, online access and faculty dues. I had a job, no, probably not. My financial stress, they never stopped. 
but I had options through scholarships that this could be replaced at my fingertips. Knees to the ground, I begged for support, and there they were, so that I could wear my academic bra. Again, to be like me, it is not easy, but to be what you want, you stand a chance. Some make choices, and some don't plan. Use my experience as a guiding hand. The school I chose and never rebuke for the experiences I gained, it's worth the pain. As a student here, I felt welcome and not one day I just felt done. Internationally accredited an institution all around, local and regional, that are all on solid ground. A so prestigious and impressive one from starting a program to ending one. Every person you meet, there are ways to treat. Cultures and personalities, although some may be discreet. Survival and competition, you are really sure to meet. To be like me wasn't easy. Negatives that follow would tell a failure, striving forward and climbing higher as these ladies I crossed the made me strong. Being a student and being a mom to make these two like making a bomb. Your life at home comes crushing down, while assignment submission becomes number one. You have a chance, it can be done. Just continue to work and don't give up. For to be like me, you've got to be a game changer. Hey, that's our very own Be Like Me. I think one of the, the takeaways for me from that spoken word is you're on a journey. And as you go along a journey, you will come across obstacles. It will not all be smooth sailing. And uh, Amoy makes it very clear that in spite of any obstacles that may be presented along your journey, you can overcome. Okay? You can still rise above it and achieve your goals. And we are here, and I, I cannot say it, stress that enough, that, that we are here to, to support you along the way because we know that at times you know that you will encounter some challenges and uh, on that note I want to welcome our director of the division of student services and development who will be able to give you some insight into some of the other support services that are available outside of the of the faculty just to ensure that you are well equipped as you journey with us Deidre. Thank you, Dean Cameron. And permit me to say good afternoon also to, to the social sciences team and ex, ex, an extra special greeting to all our new students, our valued FSS students that are joining us on this afternoon's orientation. As you heard, I am Deidre Charles and I am the team lead for the Division of Student Services and Development. Now that's a mouthful. So for short is the DSSD, and I'll tell you a little more about it very soon. In sharing with you briefly this afternoon, I want to firstly acknowledge that you are joining a dynamic faculty here at the UE St. Augustine campus, the Faculty of Social Sciences, with a rich legacy of being socially engaged and solutions oriented. Take it from me, I was once in your position as a new student in this dynamic faculty. I'll not make a different choice, love this faculty. So students, let me say congratulations to you and welcome to your first year experience at our beloved campus. Allow me to share a screen with you.
the choice you have made to hashtag the UE and pursue higher education at the St. Augustine campus signals your desire to achieve excellence and represents the trust you have placed in us to help you grow, develop, and achieve your academic as well as your personal goals. We thank you for entrusting us with this important responsibility and we are excited to start this partnership with you. Here at the Division of Student Services and Development and the Faculty of Social Sciences, we want you to develop holistically. We want all parts of self once you have left us to be fully developed. And with that, we will take you on a journey and a number of opportunities and services that will help you along the way. So how will we do that? At the Division of Student Services and Development, there are a number of departments, eight of us, that will help support you along the way, along with your faculty. So for example, orientation and transition. We are part of the orientation program and apart from your faculty, there are a number of other programs in, that will help you orient yourself to the campus, such as knowing your library, those of you who come on the halls, knowing your halls, etc. So you'll be hearing more of, about those programs as the time goes on. There is also counseling and psychological services. Some of you may get homesick. Some of you may get a bit stressed with all the work and the different environment kindly use those services. We are here to support you and they are free of charge. So that is one of the departments that will be there to support. There's a department for students with disabilities and students with medical conditions. And this department will liaise with your faculty to ensure you have the right accommodation for your studies, for your exams, etc. So there's a special care. We look after those we have special medical conditions as well as students with disabilities. There's another department that deals with academic support. So if you need some help in your, in your tutoring, you, have, you find one of your courses a little challenging, we have a department that will help support you throughout your stay with us in pairing you with senior students and directing you to where you could get the kind of support you need. We look, af we look after the international students, the regional students, our mature students and our postgrad students. Regional and international students, for example, when you come, when you are able to come face to face and meet us on the campus and you come to your faculty, we look after your stamp, your immigration stamps. So we are there to ensure that you get a smooth transition and, it, and that you're comfortable. What about if you have financial issues? What about if you need a bursary or scholarship? There is a department as well. So we are saying there's a department that will help support every aspect of your journey with us. And we are waiting for you to give you the advice and the support that you need. So financial advisory services will help with bursaries, scholarships, your get issues and give you advice on how you should finance your degree with us at your, the Faculty of Social Sciences. There's also support for the students who are going to be commuting. We have a large percentage of students who leave home and commute to the campus. Now in this new environment, we will not have be having commuters. However, we will, we will be engaging you online. So you'll be hearing from us next month. We will be a number of programs where we keep you engaged and connected to us so that when we can see you, it will not be odd or uncomfortable for you. We have the halls of residence, accommodation services. There are five halls of residence. There'll be about two available for this semester. So it's limited spaces because of course we must, must practice all the protocols, distance, social distancing. So we not have um, double rooms. We only have single rooms. So there's still spaces for those who are too far out from the campus and would like to come and be with us on the campus while they do their online learning. There is student government, and very soon you'll hear from your rep, representatives, get involved in student leadership and, and highlight the issues that are bothering you so that we in turn can put the different resources to help resolve them. And of course, there's a department that will deal with career management. If you have issues, if you want to do various testing, we have software to help you decide what your career path could look like. Co-curricular, which we'll be hearing a lot more about. 
service learning and community engagement. What I want to say in essence, students, is that you come here to get developed holistically. So you do very well in all your, your programs from all the departments, but you also ensure the other parts of self is also developed. Intellectual, spir spiritual, all aspects of self must be developed. So at this Division of Student Services and Development, apart from supporting you, we have a number of developmental activities that once you leave us, you could develop your interpersonal skills, organizing skills. So ensure that you come um, and link up with us online and we'll give you all the direction that you need. Now the COVID-19 outbreak may have distanced us physically from you at this time, but in doing so, it has prepared us to, be, to have the valuable opportunity to re-engineer and create our programming to meet you wherever you are. We want to hear from you and how we can help with your campus experience to make it an invaluable one. In addition to this orientation event, we have prepared a comprehensive and exciting virtual exercise that introduces you to the campus and then campus life. So there are eight short courses that we will engage you in. The information will be shared with you as you go along and all the various, so all the information you hear in here, you'll have a second opportunity to interact and concretize that information via those short courses. We encourage you to take full advantage of orientation resources that can be accessed from your My eLearning platform. Once you, you go on with your further orientation, all these things will come into play. After your participation in today's exercise, we want you to know that your orientation process does not stop there. It has only just begun. We ask that you make the most of your first year by staying connected, keeping abreast with all your orientation updates. And you could just visit the website to see what other programs that will help you acclimatize to this wonderful institution. You are encouraged to maintain, a positive, to, to maintain a positive outlook on your student experience and to join us in creating a vibrant online student committee, community. Sorry. With that, I would like to say on behalf of the DSSD, we want to welcome you. Thank you for listening to us. And we await with open arms to help with all your, your, your issues, all your challenges, and to ensure that your experience is an invaluable one. Welcome and congrats. Back to you, Dean. Thank you very much, Deidre. Yes, Deidre has, has walked our hallowed halls and um, certainly uh, uh, an advocate for the, the Faculty of Social Sciences. And uh, definitely the, the DSDD is really there waiting to support you. And we, we thank them for the services that they offer. Uh, just to note, just a reminder that we are, uh, we, uh, the, the chat room, if you like, is open so that if you have any questions that you want to post in the chat, you can post your questions there and we will uh, respond accordingly. And then we will have a, a question and answer time at the end. Okay. So we want to, to hand over to Lisa McDonald, who I introduced as the lecturer for the co-curricular course that's offered by the Faculty of Social Sciences, Workplace Protocol for Students. Lisa will tell us a little bit about co-curricular courses in general, and then she will let you know about what we have on offer in the faculty. Lisa? Thank you very much, Dean. So good afternoon to all and especially warm, warm welcome to our incoming students. You are about to embark on an exciting, a sometimes frustrating, but an exceedingly rewarding journey. We are going to be walking alongside you to assist in your development as a distinctive UE graduate. This is somebody who is knowledgeable, who is informed, who can be that critical thinker, who can take on the role of both leader and team player. So in order to get you into that position, there's a need for something more than just the academic courses. The academic courses will play a very important part, yes indeed, but we also have a whole host of co-curricular courses. 
And the core curricular courses really gets into and starts honing some of your softer skills. Now, how do the core curricular courses work? Within your program, you are actually allowed six uh, core curricular course credits. So your program will cover up to six co-curricular course credits. And all of those credits will go towards your first year credits. So let's talk a little bit about these co-curricular courses. You are going to have access to courses that deal with IT. So do you need to improve your, your use of Word, Excel, Microsoft pro, um, projects, you name it. We have the IT course for that. Um, we look, we have defensive courses. Those are quite um, interesting and exciting because we actually use a simulator inside of those. We also have first aid. Now, I mean, at any point in time in your life, you could be called on, on requiring some sort of first aid knowledge. And we have that course there. But what I really wanted to, to hone in on is the three courses that are offered within the, the Faculty of Social Sciences. The first of which I would like to talk to you is about our Ethics and Integrity course. Now, that course takes a very innovative approach. It actually challenges you to figure out where your ethics lie, and it further challenges you to improve your ethics. In this very challenging world that we live in, ethics is something exceedingly important. Next course I'd really like to talk about is financial literacy. So who here doesn't want to own a car? Own a house? What about a vacation? Uh, yes, right now vacations are kind of curtailed, but that's not going to be forever. Dying to take that cruise. You need to understand financial literacy. You need to understand what loans are, how do you read your contracts, how important insurances are, pensions, annuities, you name it. That course gives you all of that information. And I swear to you, I've saved the best for last, or maybe I'm just being biased. My very own workplace protocols, which is the one that I, I lecture. Workplace protocols is, is quite unique because it not only gives you understanding of what it is like within the workplace, but it also gives you best practices, strategies, tips, you name it, not just how to succeed in the workplace, but also how to succeed as a student. So what I would really like to say is take advantage. Take advantage of these co-curricular courses. They are absolutely worth it. You will never regret doing a co-curricular course. As a matter of fact, you might want to do more than the, the six um, credits and we'll figure out a way of how to get you to do that. So that being said, I'm handing over back to my dean. Thank you, Lisa. When you get a chance uh, and you're going through the courses, you will see that there's a long list of co-curricular courses, all sorts of exciting courses that you can, that you can explore, right? So really want to encourage you to, over your three years, to, to really pick up one of these courses, just to add to your your skills bank, as you would say, uh, going through with us here at, at the university. Ladies and gentlemen, as we bring our orientation to, to a close, we would like to invite the most dynamic Guild Faculty of Social Sciences Guild representative, Madam Kira Alexander. Kira keeps us on our toes. And so, I am so pleased that, that she's here today so that she can really talk to you, you know, student to student about some of what, what I expect really from being a student in the Faculty of Social Sciences. So Kira, over to you. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. Congratulations on being accepted to I don't want to say the best, but we are the best faculty. We are the biggest faculty, the faculty with all the spas and jazz in the university. And it's just a wonderful experience to be a part of this faculty. As the faculty representative, I am here to hear all of your concerns, all of your queries, so that I can see how we can work out, you know, to make your experience the best you experience ever. I have had a great experience in the university. Um, I got involved in my second year 
I would have started to go to club meetings, even though this year, because of our unique situation, a lot of the club meetings may be virtual, but I will like to encourage you all to get involved. We have clubs in this faculty, such as the Psychology Association, we have the MSU, Political Science Society, and most of these clubs have social media pages, which you can follow to keep up to date. They also always have activities happening, virtual scavenger hunts, and this is some of the, some of the resources that we always should try to be involved in, try to utilize. These things make our UE experience very dynamic and it allows us not just to come and have an academic experience, but have a holistic experience. I would also like to encourage you all in this faculty, we have some of the best understanding lecturers. So when you have issues arising, when it comes to some of your course material, you're having difficulty with certain courses, and you just think that you should reach out, I encourage you to reach out. Our lecturers, they deal with us, honestly, it's like a family. They deal with us like that's a little auntie and auntie really wanted to pass this course and do your best. So they'll encourage you, to, they'll push you to just become your best self. And the Guild is also here to do that. We are here to encourage you to be involved, but don't forget why you're here. You are here to make a difference, to get that degree in your three years and to be the best person that you can be. So I would love for you all to just remember to follow us on social media. Our pages are updated daily. We have FSS underscore Orange Nation on Instagram. And we also have the Faculty of Social Sciences page on Facebook. We tend to keep the students updated with all the latest UE news and to make sure that everyone is abreast of what is taking place in these times. So congratulations again, and back to you, Dean. Hi, thank you very much, Kira. And uh, now we, it's, it's your time where we want to give you an opportunity to ask us any burning questions that you may have uh, based on what you would have heard or if there was anything else that you, you wanted to find out as, as all the heads of departments are here as well as we do have administrative staff on the call so that I will be scrolling the chat and uh, pick up on any questions that you may have here. Okay, so I'm seeing a lot of questions coming through about academic advising for the various departments. Academic advising for first year students will be over the course of next week in all of the departments. If you check your department websites, you will get the details in terms of specific times and programs and uh, Zoom links, etc. Um, you will also receive a personal email from the department giving you that information, right? But you always have the department, department websites to, to refer to as a backup. And on that note, I want to encourage you as you, as you go along to do, please do two things. You will get updated information on your department website or the faculty's website. So you can check occasionally as you go along, just check your websites for for up-to-date information. You want to also keep checking your UE email, right? Once you have registered, you will receive a, a UE email and that is our way of communicating with you. Uh, so any, anything that has to do with you, you need to, if you're required to come to a meeting, timetabling, all everything is communicated to you via your UE email. So you need to keep on top of that. And that's how we will be communicating with you concerning the advising as well. Right. I'm seeing a, a question in the chat here about, can you do a minor while pursuing a special? Um, let me take the opportunity to explain to you the difference between a major and a, and a special. If you see the word major after your degree, a major means that you have a number of compulsory courses for your degree and then you're allowed 
10 free courses. By free courses, I mean electives. And these courses you can pick up from within your department or outside of your department, but you have 10 electives that you can choose, right? Now with a special, with a, most of the specials, you are only allowed five free courses. All other courses, which would be 25 other courses, would be compulsory courses within your program. So that a special restricts you in terms of the number of electives that you can, that you can pick up. So major, you can pick up 10 electives. A special, you can pick up only a maximum, in, in most cases, five electives. Uh, in some cases, it may be less. Now, a minor comprises five courses. Right? So that if you are doing a major, you can pick up two minors or you can pick up another, another um, or do a double major. Whereas if you're doing a special, in many cases, you will be able to, to pick up at least one minor. But it must be where you have five electives where you can, free choices, right? Where you can pick up a minor. Right? So during the, just picking up on some questions, I hear again in the chat, I'm seeing my colleagues answering to the question, do you register before or after academic advising? Um, you, it is advisable to come to your academic advising and then proceed to register because it's within that academic advising period where you will get a clear outline as to the courses that you are required to do in this semester, this upcoming semester. And so after you have been advised by your, by your advisor, your lecturer, the member of staff, then you can proceed to register. So it's advisable to go to your advising and then you proceed to register. Right. Right, so I'm seeing questions being answered. Um, uh, right, certificate. Right, the certificate in public. This is a question from Naomi. Naomi, the certificate of public, not admission, but administration, belongs to the Department of Political Science. Right, so if you need any more information on that program, you can refer to the to that department and there's information on the department's website as well right i'm seeing the question answered about advising information on minors right in terms of the i'm seeing some questions concerning the the payment of your fees now, for those of you who will be using GATE, now the, the GATE application and all of that, uh, anything to do with, with your fees, this will take place after you, after you register. And when you go to your academic advising sessions and you register, you will be able to, to, to print out your fee sheet, which will tell you exactly what you have to pay for and what you don't have to pay for. That will come after you register. Right. Any sort of general information you need on your particular program of study, you can, of course, refer to the department websites where you will get an outline of the, the, the courses that you actually have to complete in your program. Right. I'm seeing here. Right. Who is required to write the math proficiency test. Can I ask uh, Dr. Conrad if he can take that question, please? The math proficiency test is really administered to those who uh, do not have the uh, the passing. What what happens is that if you do not have a passing grade, in like let's say of the what they call it, the additional math then we would require you to write the MPT exam. Uh, those who have the passing grade in the additional math do not have to write the MPT exam. 
but can proceed to register for Econ 1003. I'll, I'll, again, those who do not have the passing grade in the additional math are required to write the MPT exam. Okay, thank you for that. That was a question posed by Davina Sukla. So, my question here on uh, what the, uh, the registration, everything will be online. Will the courses for this semester, all courses will be administered online uh, and you will get specific details from your, your lecturers. Of course, when you register for the various courses, how those courses will be conducted online. So all of that will take place after, after you register. Right. Okay. I'm not seeing any more questions in the chat and those that have, can someone choose to apply for remedial math over the MPT? Yes, yes. You, can, you can opt not to write the MPT and uh, register for Econ 0001. That's up to the individual. <clears throat> so if you decide you do not want to write the MPT, you go ahead and just register for the 0001. The fee associated with the MPT exam is $200. TT. And uh, you have a date for that yet? Yes, the date for the MPT exam is uh, September September 2nd. September 2nd. Yeah. And if, if you do the MPT, do you still need to do Econ 1003? <clears throat> Where's my thing? If you if you write the MPT and what what the and you pass the MPT, you now are eligible to register for one zero zero three. If you are not successful in the MPT, then you are required to register for Econ zero 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 one, which is the Math for Social Sciences. Okay. All right. So what the MPT does, if you are successful in it, it allows you to then register for that one zero zero three course. Okay. Great. Um, what, what we do tell individuals in preparation for the MPT is to use any CSEC level uh, textbook that you would be have access to in preparation for it. It covers the entire syllabus at that level. And it's a multiple choice exam. I think it's 60 questions. Okay. We do not have past exams available. Thank you for that, Darren. I think you... You anticipated some questions there and gave a response. <laughs> Lisa, uh, can I ask you to just briefly indicate how to apply for the co-curricular credits and when do you apply? Co-curricular courses. Um, I'm uncertain if that question means... I think you will do that through your department. This is... Oh, I wonder if it's the... Is it, not, is it the credits or the courses? Um, you can just register for the courses. You're allowed up to six credits. And then you apply through DSSD for your certificate. I'm not sure if that answers the question. Right. I just wanted to make sure it's, it's the courses you mean and not the, the credits. Because if it's the courses, well then yeah, you, you register as normal as, as your other courses. Yeah, you register as normal. Right. Right, so Nikisha, Dr. Conrad answered that question about the resources available for the MPT. Right. right, so you know where to check for your grants and scholarships. The DSSD indicated that that's uh, an area that they also cover. Um, Right, is the MPT for management studies or, or only econ? Darren? Uh, one, I think 1003, if I'm not mistaken, is one of the core courses. So I think it will be for all students who are in the faculty. All students in the faculty. Yes. Okay. And we have some questions here around the, the completed medical forms that students have to, to submit. Uh, 
Dr. Charles, you have any information on that by chance? Um, what's, what's the exact question? I'm not, I'm... When is the deadline for the completed medical forms? Currently, it is diffi it's a difficult time to, to get. get I think it's online as well, but I could make, let me make a quick call and revert. Okay, the deadline for the, the medical forms. Uh, Darren, there's a, a lot of interest in the MPT here. So what's the passing grade for the MPT? Um, it's uh, 70 is the passing grade. Um, the MPT, we are still working out some of the details for the MPT exam. We do have everyone's email addresses. We've requested that. And so we will be communicating the information to everyone via the uh, email once we finalize the details uh, in terms of the payment arrangements and um, in terms of the actual sitting of the exam, whether it will be online or face-to-face. -face. We're just working out a few details, but the students will get that information shortly. Okay, so you will get the... Um you will get the information as well as to, to how to apply. Yes, all of those details, payment and everything will be included in that email. <clears throat> right, so your um, payment of tuition fees and so forth, all of that can be done online. And I saw a question here about... Right, students who do not have access to stable and secure internet connection, how can you profit from the virtual online lectures? The, the university is working with our telecommunication providers to provide uh, packages for, for our students. You will get some more information on that for those of you who would need to access the, the, the internet, well, for all of us who would need to, to access the internet for classes. So that information will become available soon in terms of the, the packages that will be available. The university is also at this time in talks with the, the Ministry of Health to determine the, the possibility of allowing students in a rich restricted way who can uh, possibly access the campus um, for for Wi-Fi purposes but this is this is something that we are trying to work out of course we have to work with the guidelines that are being provided by the the relevant ministries so if it is that we 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 do receive the permission for some level of, of access by students to the campus for the purpose of securing a secure internet connection. We will be sure to communicate that to the student body via, via your email, right? So look out for that. So we're still working through that. But in addition to the, to the point about the internet, just to say that the campus library, we, the university has secured a number of a number of, of computers or tablets or devices, let me say devices, that will be available for loan for our students who do not have devices to engage in classes. So if it is that you are desirous of, of getting one of these one of these devices, you can reach out to Deidre, who are we reaching out to for the for the equipment? Do you do you know? They, they could actually um, send an email to the, on the DSSD. If they go on the website, they'll get a DSSD address. They could send a request through that and I will challenge, challenge, challenge it to the huh. library. Okay. Great. Right. I want to also speak on the, the question on the medical certificates. It's open. We, we still we have a, a, a wide window. So we're allowing the students to continue submitting their medicals. All you have to do is email it to us, scan an email. Okay, great. Thanks for that. All right, so everything come to this. Right, so we answered all our MPT questions. Uh, Darren, can you confirm that the, the MPT will be online? The MPT exam? 
I cannot confirm that right now because we're, we're working out a few details and we made a request to campus principal, so we're waiting his response before we put that information out there. Okay, great. Yeah. Right, so as soon as we have that information, it will come, yeah, with... it will come to the students. Right. Um, okay. Right, at what point in the academic year are minors declared, Talia? Yes, Dean, this would be either in the final year or after they've completed all the five courses that are required for that particular minor. Okay, uh, um, Amira, Ali, I trust that answers your question. And uh, how do we receive the student ID card given the current circumstances? Deidre, you can help us with that one. This will also be online as well, Dean. Um, the, uh -huh. the whole ID card, yes, it will be online. Once you have registered, when you finish your registration process, it will lead you to the next steps, but that will also be done online. It's clearly stated online what needs to be done. Right, so check the website again. Correct, you correct. Information. correct. Right, right. Okay, so I'm seeing the, the other questions uh, being answered. So I think we are good there. Right, now you would notice that throughout we would be saying, well, if you check this website or check that website, check online, check online, much of the information, all of the information, much of the information you will be able to find online. Uh, just pay attention to, to, to sites such as the DSD, DSDD, site, they will be able to give you a lot of the information that you are asking about and that would refer to, to those general support services that are available. Uh, anything to do with your program, with your department, of course refer to your department's website. At the web, on the website as well you will be able to get specific persons who you can actually reach out to via email or a phone call. Right, so you want to look out for contact persons on your website just in case you have a question that is not answered on the website. So you want to, to, to refer to those sites. Anything to do with your with, with gate applications and, and um, paying fees and so forth, you can reach out to the, you, you will find information available uh, concerning financing your degree on the website as well and if it is that there are questions that are still not answered there there are specific persons that you can send your request to and the email addresses are available on the websites right um what you probably and, and this will probably be the last question that we'll take when will we know what textbooks we need for our courses because this is a question that comes up every year um, at the university, for every course, you will receive a, a course outline, right? And in that course outline, will, there will be a note as to what books you would need for, the, for the, the course or what other resources you will need for the course. Now, that information will only be available once you register for the course and you have your first class with your lecturer, the lecturer will post all that information for you on the, the My eLearning platform, which is the, the, um, the platform that we use to, 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 for you to, to register and access your, your classes. So when you register and you access My eLearning, there you will see all your courses listed. And for each course, the lecturer for that course will post information for that course in that particular what we call course shell. So you will get your slides or uh, your handouts, any readings, your course outline, everything would be in that my learning space, right? So once you register and uh, you will get all that information in terms of accessing my learning and there you will get that information, right? Okay. So I think, well, I'm seeing the questions are being answered as, as we go along. I just wanted to pick up on some of those um, general questions that perhaps um, persons would need a general response to. Okay. 
All right, it's now 2.30. And at this point in time, I want to again reiterate what was said by all my colleagues that we, we warmly welcome you to the Faculty of Social Sciences, to the family, to the community. And all of us, we, we really look forward to engaging you for now in the virtual space, but we, we look forward to when we can actually see you face to face and we can touch and feel and get that interaction going. And we're really hoping that that can take place uh, in, in the early part of, of 2021. But for this upcoming semester, we will be operating in a virtual space. And uh, in that virtual space, the experience will be just as rich. And our lecturers are currently preparing to, to interact with you in that space. And so we really want you to, to, to take the opportunity to, to learn how to navigate that space and to get the most out of it. Right? So we need for you to really stay connected, stay connected with us through the different through your departments, stay connected through, through the faculty office, and any questions, feel free to reach out. And uh, we are in our offices, so you can reach out by phone. If you don't get us by phone, shoot us an email, and we will, we will respond to you in a timely manner. And so... After this, we expect that you will be attending your academic advising sessions, which will take place next week in the different departments. And please stay, stay connected with all the different first year experience uh, initiatives that will be taking place over the course of this week, next week, and into the, and into the, the, the first week of, of September. Right? So, I want to take this opportunity to thank my colleagues who have taken the time to, to join us here today and thank the heads for their inspiring and encouraging words and thank the, our administrative staff who are on the call who I see responding to the questions that are coming through as well. And so to our new students, welcome again and uh, we will be in touch with you through the various portals as, as we go along. So I want to take this opportunity to wish you all the, the best for this semester and enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Okay, so we are signing off from the Faculty of Social Sciences. Jarrell, we hand over to you. Thank you, Dean. And again, I would like to um, send well wishes to all of our students and uh, officially bring today's orientation exercise to a close. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. <laughs>